So here we have Daniel Partridge. Um, hmm. Hello. So, yes, Daniel Partridge is, um, well, the highest ranked Cuba who started his WCID is 2022 by a very, very long way. I'm not sure how long, but certainly a long way down. And That's it's quite a cool start. Um, yeah, I mean, I presume in three weeks time, you're going to beat um, Daniel Shepard on some of ranks by getting an FMZ mean, aren't you? Uh, hopefully. So there's like, if I just check rankings, there's currently 75 people that have an FMZ mean. But I've done, I did a mean these last couple of days and it was 37.67. So that should hopefully boost me up. But yeah, I do plan to improve my summer ranks. A lot. That's... Yeah, where am I with my one rubbish FMC mean, which was literally just C for well, FOP or FOP. Right. Yeah, so I'm 35th just by getting a mean. So just by getting a mean of 40, which you can do without okay. even knowing any FMC techniques. Yes. Yeah, so you actually know FMC techniques, you should easily knock Daniel, Daniel Shepard off. And then enter the top 10 if you don't do that at Stevenage anyway. Hopefully. Well, I have been working on uh, a few events recently, but the ones, but I guess, like, annoyingly in the, in the, like, well, in terms of summer ranks, the ones I've been practicing the most, I'm already decently ranked for. Like, I've been doing a ton of clock recently. I've been, like, but I'm NR5 for that, so I probably. It won't really affect other breaks. Why do you want to get good at clock? <laughs> uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> You've already beaten Patrick Dwyer in the clock out tournament. We're probably not doing that again for quite a while. So. I mean, that was like the most important thing to just ever happen in human history. And like, <laughs> I was a part of it. So that's just... very special. But... And obviously, yeah. Jacob Chambers got knocked out right away. <laughs> and then gets world record average a week later. So Yeah, yeah. So are you coming to East London then? No, because I've been like going to a few comps lately and I'm it is quite far for me, but I'd really like to go, but I just can't. Right, okay. Yeah. So we'll probably have a skewed knockout tournament there, which um We'll see. Hopefully somebody yeah. can beat Harry with ease. Right. <laughs> yeah, that would be very really nice. I feel like my main goal in queuing is just to never size Harry Owen. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> I think to be fair, it's a fair. The only oh, reason that I've been doing FMC is just that 27 single. You've got to beat him at skew. I know you've already beaten him at skew. And then... Yeah. FMC and blind because he's got a four blind success now. Oh yeah, but um, I know that Harry has been practicing quite a lot, but I'm my PB at well, I had a solve the other day that was two wit uh, like two edges <laughs> off getting a five minute forty four, and I'm pretty sure his PB at home is like twelve minutes. So I, if I get a success in comp, it would hopefully be sub Harry. Because no. I am going to that uh, the Bishop Stortford blind off, I think. So Yep. Um, Unfortunately I will be leaving you on your own there. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. I've dropped down to go to Chippenham instead because I've got I've got the three out of three multi blind success, so I don't have Ellie Jane emphasizing me anymore. So I don't really have any good reason to go to Bishop Stortford. Yeah, I guess I'm. I definitely want to qualify at UKC for four blind and maybe five blind. Yeah, I think right. I have been doing a bit of FMC practice recently, but like I don't think I haven't. I'm like good enough to get a thirteen out of thirteen because I have been doing thirteen cubes. When right, and <laughs> I think it's it's a ridiculously easy big cube podium at Bishop Stortford, which is. One of the reasons why I'm going seven by seven, 
on the psych sheet, second place is a three minute twenty meme, which is just like ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I've given up on winning a, another podium by not going. Although hopefully yeah, I should have podium in 6x6 six six at Chippenham anyway. Let's yeah. have a look. Bishop Storford. <laughs> Who replaced me then? I don't know. Oh yeah, Stephen Kearns is just almost certainly going to win. Oh yeah, there's no question about it. It's just hopefully I can... Well... James uh, Molloy and Christopher Morris average like pretty similar, so it's I could come fourth or I could come second. Like it, it's just about how I do on the day because my current official mean counts as three fifty nine, which is quite sad. But yeah, fair enough. And then just the same with six by six, which you're even worse at on in national rankings. Yeah, I um my last two six by six means I've had like two bad pops. I average like two, like maybe just above two fifteen at home, but I still can't get wow. anywhere close to that. And of course, you've told me that you you're going you're using Yao now. <laughs> yes, I I have turned to the dark side. It's... <laughs> yeah, everybody seems to be doing that now. <laughs> Yeah, I think I saw that, like, Max Shaw, I think, he was averaging, like, 240 on six by, uh, on 7 by 7 like, a month or two ago. And now he's averaging, like, 225 because he switched to Yao and did a bit of practice. But, like, I, I feel that a 15-second improvement when you're that fast in two months while switching to another method means that that method is pretty good. Yeah, it does. It does raise a question. I mean, obviously, if I ever try to switch to Yao, it'll be completely different the way I do it to the way everyone else does it. But um, yeah, it's not yeah. something I will ever rule out. And is yeah. wait, don't you do like M slice edge pairing? Well, yeah, that's the whole point. Although, of course, yeah. Anu Zhang does edge pairing on M with Yao, so it is possible. And has been okay. done to achieve sub two seven by seven solves now. Um, yeah. But obviously what everybody cares about you and what we probably should have done the very start is get you to do a pyramid solve. All right. Can you see my like camera and like me or? Um, just about. Um, so, yep. Yeah. Ooh, four tip scramble. If I do that, is it any better? Yeah, like, I think Harry Savage got two point five eight, if I remember correctly. He got a two point five. This is a um. This is not a good scramble. <laughs> right. Well, you better still beat Harry Savage then, otherwise, wow, well, your NR might get lost soon. got a three nice. a three not not my best excuse me i thought you got twos in pyramids yeah i averaged 2.2 2, which is 2. It, it was a horrendous scramble i couldn't find anything mm -hmm. i guess i'm just making excuses because harry savage is just a better pyramid so than me <laughs> mm, does look like it doesn't it yeah and of course, Harry Savage also has national record for well, did have national record for clock. Yeah, that single. It's funny that that single that he had the five oh eight. If I'm not mistaken, I probably am. But that five oh eight is nearly two seconds slower than what the current NR average is. Well, I mean, it's a second and a half slower than what the current NR average is. <laughs> well, yeah, but obviously Jacob Chambers does have the world record now, so. And um, something quite significant changed in the hardware, which you probably have never experienced. <laughs> no, not really. I started cubing in. Well, just pre the pandemic, like, I think I started probably speed cubing in February of 2020. 
Right. And then comps were called off and I just queued like crazy. Yeah. Pretty much the entire... Well, and then when I went back to school in... I think it was like... Okay, I went back to school and I was still queuing. But then there was... We kept on going back to school and coming home and doing online learning. But I think it was... I quit again in... or I quit in March 2021... And mm. then only came back March 2022. So I've been queuing from February of 2020. Yeah, February of 2020 to March of 2021. And then from March, April of 2022 to now. So Right. Interesting. So, yeah, of course, the Chi clock was released in July 2020, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, you would have never experienced the um, annoyance of having a um, Lingao clock. <laughs> I, I think I did, actually, because I remember when the Chi clock was released, because I had both the Lingao and the Sheng Shao, because I... I even when I just started queuing, I wanted to be an all rounder, like good at every event, and I, and I desperately wanted to get good at clock, but the hardware was just so bad, and I was just like very mad that no cube company had done it, and then she released the clock, and that was that. I think that's the only time that I think in my cubing career that uh, a cubing company releasing a cube has really made my performance better because. There's just been such good cubes in every event, pretty much. Yeah, it is true. And of course, you still use the usual little magic pyramid, which is not one of my best sellers by any means. But the the wire end is like I've tried well, I have, which you gave me the way long pyra. I had the GAN. That's why I used the Wakefield Spring. Mm. I've tried the Maglev WRM, which is no not W. Way long. No, I've tried the Maglev Moyu Pira. It's yeah. really bad. Um, I've I've tried pretty much every good Pira, and the YLM just beats all of them by a really long way. Right. It's it's just it just really suits my turning style. Like the way I turn is I never use moves like this. I always use index finger flicks, and it's very snappy and doesn't overshoot, which is. Uh, really good for my turning style, and I just really like it. Yeah, that makes sense. Should probably leave a review on the site to see if we can get any other people buying. Yeah, them. I'll, I'll do that tonight. That'll be <laughs> sure. So, so yeah, for Pyraminx, um, well, you use V first, don't you? And then L. Yeah, I do. I so so. I'm I... guessing. I just do this scramble. I'm obviously color neutral and I just do yellow. I don't do it the beginner's method way where you put the centers in and then insert the edges. I find ways that I can do like block, well, not block building, but block preservation. And there's just tons of little ways, little tricks that you can make these. So I see this a three move B where I can. Well, I actually made the layer, but pretend it didn't. The V is where you have a layer minus one edge. Yeah. And then Pyramids what I do is right. I do an algorithm which solves all of the rest. There's an intuitive way to do it, like intuitive L3, which is where you look at the bottom edge and match it to the center and then do like an algorithm to finish it. But I just do the last two steps in one algorithm, which is what the top V first solvers do. So I'm guessing you know all of the L4E Yeah, how, how, how many are there in total? How, how many are there in total? 30-something, I think. All right. There good. might be fewer, actually. But too. most of them are intuitive. They're just... You just need to know how the owl works, but when you do... Like you can figure them out just by looking at them. You don't actually have to remember the owl. Right. That, that does make sense. I mean, if I ever <laughs> want to get into pyramids, something to learn. 
so of course you're obviously extremely fast at tps um i think that's one thing we've noticed i think you've said that you've um like unofficially broken two by two world record on the world record scrambles before well i mean on i was turning like ridiculously well i i probably couldn't recreate it now but two by two uh well it has to be a uh, four moves to be wc legal and for the sexy move when i was on um well just when just on a random day, I was bored, so I decided to try and like get it really fast. And I was getting consistently sub zero point three on it, and I got like a zero point two three, which is I can't get anywhere close to it now. But... Uh, give it. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> it was a horrendous DNF. I'll try again. But... Yeah. I mean, obviously, you need to be prepared to do that in competition. That's... Yeah. Okay. There you go. 0.39. That was decent. You got but... 0.39? Yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. You should Thanks. put your camera down a bit and then just do it again, but so that everybody can oh, okay. see it. Um, is that? Yeah. We can all see now. Right. Right. Lock up. I can't. <laughs> Let's hope I don't get a four mover in competition because I'll just mess it up. Okay, I'm done with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you got a 0 0.39, but nobody saw it, unfortunately. Yeah. And then, of course, you're also pretty good at skewb. Which yeah, is, I've, I've actually been Harry doing Cole. um a bit of practice for that recently because I know that Harry Owen, that's his main event, and I don't want him to get better at me, get better than me at skew. So I've been, I, well, I learned full series advance, which is an, or oh, it's in the name, it's an advanced method. And then I've been learning NS algorithms, which are for the last layer case, it's like the optimal algorithm for like move wise. Hmm. But then what I found yeah. with Skube was just the the finger tricks are just so annoying the way you have yeah, to but hold them in. There's ways that like there's like hidden little triggers in the uh you that can be found in some of the algorithms where like for this case where you've got so you've got the soul white layer and then you've got I mean it's out of frame. Can you move it? Oh, you... um where is frame here? Yeah, yeah. Where you've got peanut, in this case is called peanut plus H perm. Um, there's a way where you can like hold it like this and do R prime, R prime, R, rotate up here, do a sledge, and then when you do the last move, sort of rotate back and then reinsert the corner. And it's, if I don't lock up horrendously, it can be quite a good out. Right. And what would the alternative to that be in terms of sled? sled well, sledging? that's quite a bad advanced case where you'd have to, you do some variation of three sledges and hedges to effectively reduce it to a U-turn, which would be a five sledges and hedges to solve that case, which is right. like, just not good. Yeah, that makes sense. So, what? Guess... Hmm? One thing I have been doing a bit of recently is uh, blindfolded because I've been trying to learn freestyle corners. Like I've made my own spreadsheet and like been figure trying to figure out the comms. And if I can't, I'll like look at blind base, I think, where it shows you what algs the top blind is using. It's been quite useful. But I think blind is, if when you get good, it can be a really fun event to do. So. But... Yeah, it does definitely make sense. And and interestingly, I, I did actually um recently see Hassan Kanini uploaded a video where he got 32 with M2OP, which I was I actually saw that. Yeah. So I, I, I... <laughs> it is that's ridiculous. I can't imagine. I, I could barely imagine doing M2 freestyle in 32, but 
like OP corners take me like at least ten seconds just because of the setup moves and then the, the long algorithm. Mm. Like, so I'm guessing your one oh seven here was with M two OP. Yeah, it was. It's I well, I have a forty eight with M two OP and a forty nine, but thirty two just seems ridiculous. Right. And then your 232 mean, I'm guessing that's just going ridiculously safe. Yeah, that was. That was at Lincoln, where I just wanted to get a mean. And I did. And now I just want to get a good single, like sub 55, maybe. When I learn blind, when I learn three stars, hopefully it'll be a lot better. But... Yeah, that makes sense. If you can do it, I should probably do it one day, but um, for now... I'm just going to stick to what I know because it's easy, which is what precisely what you don't do, it seems. I'm guessing you actually look at things and try and practice properly. So... Yeah. So for three by three, um, so yeah, you beat me on average quite considerably, but not single yet, which is interesting. No. Um, I'm I'm not great at getting good singles. Like my PV at home, I averaged like nearly sub nine, and my PV was six point five four. It's I'm just bad at getting good singles. Like my PV is still I think five point seven six. Yeah, five point seven six. But right, like hopefully my time will come and I'll get a last layer skip where I've made an X cross and I'll get a three. But I. <laughs> I'm not too fussed about getting a good single because 676 is already like decent income. I just want to get a sub eight average. Yeah. So, do you, I'm guessing you know obviously full OLL and PLL and yeah. good F2L. And then do you know anything beyond that? Um, not really. I guess apart from three star comms mean that I know a tiny bit of ZBLL where there's just three corners that need to be solved. Like, if I can hopefully remember this com. I mean, it's out of frame again. Oh, that was the wrong com. But if I move this, is that better? Well, yeah, the cube is right in the middle of the frame now, but um, just right. doesn't migrate. Yeah. Effectively, this is a really, really basic one that's just Niklas, but um, well, this com is technically a three star alg, and there's like many for that. Which mm -hmm. I guess when I learn full three star and I know all of that stuff on top, I would know quite a few ZBLs, but I really just do cross. I'm bad at making X crosses F2L, OLL, PLL. I'd like to do Tim on solutions. I just <laughs> so you're more like Max Park. It's always interesting watching those reconstructions because it's like watching Max Park's reconstructions. It's like, yeah, I do the same thing potentially better, and then watching Tillman's solutions, it's like, it's okay, ridiculous. Never have thought of that. Um... But then both of them have a 4.86 average now, so both methods work. And yeah, guess, it is. It's pushing, well, what happens if you add Max's speed, turning speed, and Timon's solutions? The thing is about um, Timon's solutions is that it, whilst his solutions are good and his TPS isn't near Max's, he does still have incredible TPS. Like mm. on his four point five one, I think it's four point five one to uh get world record average after the miss scramble. So everyone was watching him. It was like the most insane TPS. Like I can't get beat four point five one on that scramble, like with his solution or anything. It's yeah, I've never to do that. Um, I mean, I made that video where I beat Timon on his plus 3.75 plus 2, but obviously I didn't get 3.75. Got 5.7. Oh, yeah. 
But yeah, what what always interests me is the way he does sexy M prime inverse sexy, or the inverse of that, as if that's just some like OLL. But he's not doing it for OLL. He's doing it to get a ZBLL, and I think he does that algorithm. Oh, oh so like where he does like setup moves into a com, where like yeah, so. But the ridiculous thing is, on his 4.86 world record average, on the first soul, which is a 402, he literally, so he did like a setup into a com, which the com is this OLL. And, but the way he set it up, he cancelled into the com. So he effectively did a pretty good one look last layer, where it's just ridiculous. Like, Mm. But then, even yeah. it, uh, what I've seen a lot of him him doing it, it is what I said: uh, um, sexy M prime inverse sexy with a wide R move. Um, basically setting up into a ZBLL, and presumably he knows what ZBLL he's going to get every time when he does that, which is just something I don't think anybody else does. Um, I mean, with that um, sexy um, M prime inverse sexy R Y prime, um, it's just three edges that cycle. But the speed that he turns at, he can't seriously just look at it and just like predict the Z or like it's. I don't. Well, he must. He do, must... Otherwise, what on earth is the point of doing that? But I mean, by predicting the Z uh, the ZBLL, I mean. I think he just knows the, what case the ZBLR will give instead of looking at it and predicting it, which that's what pretty much everyone else would do, but he is just ridiculous. Hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing it's just cycling three edges, so he just knows instantly that. But um, I guess we're not really interviewing Timon, we're interviewing you. And um, yeah, so what other events are worth looking at so you obviously done it quite a bit of square one which is interesting yeah i i was learning csp but then i sort of stopped because it's very depressing to try and learn and, and you've only was... ever had four rounds of square one <laughs> your second was your pr which is 19 no, 17th in the country. Mm. I, I put in a bit of practice, but I, I put in like 1.6k souls since that. But that average was so lucky at Stevenage. I averaged that now. It's just in Lincoln and Droidwich, I just got bad scrambles and, well, bad turning. And I got parities. I got four out of five no parities at Stevenage, which is like really lucky. Right, okay. And then, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing you have to know all the annoying algorithms for square one <laughs> and know how to turn the thing properly. So it's, yeah, good cube shape into um, o, C, P, and E, P, and then uh, no, C, C, O, and E, O. But you've got to, I guess you can do CO and EO at the same time. Well, on so on the scramble, like I see on top, I don't know, this is called maybe seven one and then start. Is this in frame? Yeah. So like this is I think this is called seven one and star. I do an alg which goes like this. So I take so I have scallop and I it's might be called poor no muffin i don't know and then i do one slice which gives effectively one slice to yeah this which is just an easy case then co okay. cp and then i've got parity i do ep with mostly just adj adj I've been trying to learn some ads, but it's doing adj can be quite quick. But 
I know the no. all the outs for like C O E O C P. They're quite easy to learn, and then just it's you don't need to learn that many outs to get good at scrum. There's like quite a misconception that you do, but you to yeah. get really good at scrum, you have to learn a ridiculous amount of outs, but mm. not right. to like get sub fifteen. I'd say. So I guess it's just a case of getting used to the turning of it as well, because that's yeah. Of, I mean, I haven't put much effort into square one, but um, I'm not good at turning it, and I think that's a big issue. Um, so what else should we look at? Your megaminks. So um, you probably actually sub one at megaminks by now because you just practice stuff and are always improving. It seems. Um I don't average quite so one. I I think I average like one or two. Right. Yeah, around one around one or two. But I I think I have many sub one averages at home, but in comp I just I had three rounds at Wakefield. I sort of messed up all of them. I got that fifty five single, but I also plus two another fifty five at Drewitch, which was quite sad. But I I feel that. I'm not too sad about like PR fails now because I know that like I'm getting better at it. So in the future, I just break what it would have been. Yeah, <laughs> that does make sense. Although when you get to the extremes of that, well, I mean, Jaden McNeil never got anywhere near his three point six cube drops. So... Oh yeah, but I'm not going to be getting a twenty seven. Well. 27 ER on Megaminx suit, uh, or like anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you might do one day. You're more likely to just do get Pyraminx stuff, aren't you? I mean, getting really good would be like a cool thing. Like, I currently average like 2.2, so. ER is 1.72 and world record is 1.66. I have many averages sub ER and I think a couple sub world record. It's just I it's just not possible in competition for I'd say at least the rest of the year and maybe the first half of next year. It's just getting 1.66 in comp is just so hard. <laughs> like You'd have to have, even if the scrambles are really good, you'd have to have such good turning on all of them. I just, even if I got an insane scramble set, I just think I'd choke it because of nerves. Mm. And with an average of 1.66 seconds, like, you cannot allow any time for lockups, which I get a fair few of in competition, which is because of just nerves. Hmm. I'm don't... currently just oh. trying to experiment with my solutions. I've been trying to get much better Vs, which has been working, I think. I probably well I have improved my Vs a ton in the past month or so. But I think t my TPS is probably my like the best thing about my pyrrha solving that I've improved like every aspect of it. I think a lot since just Wakefield because I've been practicing just a ton of pyrrha every day. Right. So I'm guessing but you're I, pretty much on, on full one look now. I'm guessing that's I'm good... probably like 75% maybe. Like it's, well, it depends what you mean by one look. I don't want look AUF on most souls, but you can, you you don't have to pause for AUF because you can sort of like I know what AUF is for every single owl, so like when I'm doing it, I can just tell what the AUF is going to be. But I still count souls where I don't want look AUF as one looks. But like obviously, if I just pull up a scramble here, I could probably hopefully one look it. Please be a nice scramble. Right, so um, move the camera up so we can see your eyes are shut and then hold the pyramids a bit high so that it's in frame. All right, uh, I need to actually find we can't, we can't actually here. see that your eyes are shut. <laughs> 
So mm, okay. I trust him that he is actually Wait, solving pure can We can see you, but we can't see that your eyes are shut. So we don't know that you're doing pure blind successfully. Uh, oh wait, can you? Yeah. Do I need to put? Do I need to put it higher? Well, probably higher and further away, so that we can. Yeah, I mean, it just goes. Oh, back. further away. I can. Like, this is a not the best. Uh, I probably can't one look this. This is one of the ones I can't. I'll give it my best effort though. It just. Right. Um. Okay. Fine. I know what case is going to give me. It's just about. Oh gosh. I think this is too hard. I'd, I'd probably take... I could one look at it. It'd probably just take way too long. Right. Uh, well, why don't you just solve it and do another... Why don't you just solve it and do another scramble and see... All if right. Uh... Yeah, right. Be another three, isn't it? Disgraceful. Three-second pyramid solve. Yeah, this is much better scramble. Okay. Okay. I mean, what can I see in that scramble? Blue's not too difficult. I could probably plan two edges. Yeah, I'm. I'm just a tiny bit confused about. Hmm. All right. So. Oh, I had two flip. Oh dear, two flip. <laughs> Can't do pyro blind then. <laughs> uh, I tried to do the AUF there. Well, I did. I just <laughs> hadn't solved it. Right. Okay. Well, two minutes left now by the looks of things. So, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, wow. Um, probably salted caramel. Okay. <laughs> Good. Banging flavor. Extravagant there. Um, and when can people see you at cubing competitions? All right. So I will be going out this weekend, Stevenage Autumn B, I think. I'll mm. be going both days to that. And then I will be going to, I think I've mentioned earlier, the Bishop Stortford British Blind Up. 2022 um and then i will be going to the cubes uk fmc and cubes uk championships i'll be going to the peterborough venue for fmc so. all right i'll see you there <laughs> oh that that should be cool and then after that haven't got any comps planned but i definitely will be going to more not going to western supermare then no it's like a six hour drive so i don't think that's going to happen <laughs> oh, oh, it, it has a very good event list. I'm quite sad I can't go. Yeah, nice to find another competition with two rounds of six and seven. Always good. Yeah. And um, then I'm guessing there'll be more announced soon. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. No pyramid, it's, no, no pyramid. Yeah. Also, it's got big blind, and I wanna, I wanna do big blind, but I guess I'll just. Yep. Well, I've got Bishop Stortford, so I'll, I'm doing big blind at that. It's got three rounds of five by five, which is 